Hey there all my GLP-1 warriors. Welcome back to the channel where we talk about everything GLP-1 related. Whether you're on Ozempic, Wigovi, Zepbound, Manjaro, Compound, or if you're just GLP-1 friendly, this channel is for you. Today, we're going to dive into the juicy topic that popped up faster than your appetite did after missing a shot. GLP-1 friendly products. Yes, my friends, whether it's protein shakes, frozen foods, cookbooks, or vitamins, we're going to talk about it all. Everybody seems to want a piece of that GLP-1 pie. And the ironic thing about that is most of us don't even crave pie anymore. Here we go. Let's start off by talking about frozen foods. Healthy Choices recently decided to add a label of on track to their 28 of their items, meaning that the foods are high in proteins, low in calories, and a good source of fiber, therefore making them GLP-1 friendly. We'll see about that. Again, I want to remind everybody that they have not changed their food at all. It is the same food. They just have not have a label on it now saying that they're on track and GLP-1 friendly. This move is designed to make a more convenient and healthy choice to people. But again, since they have really not changed anything at all, it is very important that you read the nutrition and the, on the label to find out if it's really right for you. Experts are weighing in on this development. Dr. Alexandra Soyo, who's an internal medicine who specializes in preventive health, nutrition, and obesity management, points out while these products weren't specifically made for GLP-1 users, they're being marketed appropriate for them. She notes that actual foods that, that are designated for GL1 people are very limited guidelines and people really don't exactly know what that means. Dr. Mir Ali, who's a bariatric surgeon and medical director of Memorial Care Surgical Weight Loss Center, views it in a little bit more positive way, stating what people eat is crucial regardless of their weight loss method. He believes if there's a way to help people figure out what their dietary choice is, it is beneficial. Jessica Kornig, who's a nutritionist and author, finds the move fascinating from a marketing standpoint, noting that it is unusual to see a medication on a food product or label. While these labels are making it easier for people to identify certain nutritional profiles, it's essential to remember that the meals themselves haven't changed. Therefore, it is crucial to read all the ingredients and ensure that the product meets the specific dietary needs. Now let's talk about protein shakes. Are they a GLP friendly option or just marketing hype? You've probably seen them everywhere. Shiny new labels saying GLP one friendly, a perfect for weight loss journeys and perfect for GLP one users. People that are on Ozempic, Wagovi, Manjaro, Zepbound. Sounds convenient, right? But the question, are these shakes any different from the regular ones that you're drinking all along? Spoiler alert, not really. Here's the thing with protein shakes. They've always been a good tool for anybody trying to lose weight or gain muscle. And they've always been very nutrition, high in protein, low in calories, easy to digest. Those are the basics. They haven't changed. The only thing that's changed is the marketing. Companies are very popular with the GLP-1 medications and they want to jump in on the bandwagon. Take Nestle's for example. They recently launched a new product called Boost Pre-Meal Hunger Support. It's marketed as being designed for people on weight loss drugs because it mimics the GLP-1 hormone and helps you feel fuller quicker. Clever, right? But when you take a closer look, it's just a protein shake and they've added a little fiber. Something you could easily do yourself and less expensive. So, do you really need these special protein shakes? Nope, not really. Regular protein shakes work just fine and you don't have to pay anything extra for that trendy little label saying GLP-1 friendly. So protein shakes can absolutely help people on GLP-1 medications. Why? Well, because the medications tend to suppress your appetite so it's hard to eat enough protein during the day. Protein is super important for maintaining muscle and for weight loss. A quick shake can be a lifesaver when you're not hungry and 
even when you are hungry so that you don't eat as much during a meal. Here's what you should look at when you choose a protein shake. High in protein. They should have 15 to 30 grams per serving. This helps keep you full and support muscle. Low in calories. You'd like for your shake to be between 150 to 200 calories per serving. This will help you with your weight loss. These shakes should also be low in sugar. Some of them are a lot higher. Many of them add sugar. Many of them have sugar in, in their ingredients and a lot of the items in there and the flavoring and a lot of stuff. So please read the label and check. Low sugar is very important. Fiber, that's optional. It's a good way to get fiber, but there are also other ways to get fiber. It's usually included and it's kind of like a bonus. At the end of the day, if you're not finding GLP-1 friendly on the label, that's fine. It's about what fits your nutritional needs and how much you want to spend. Remember, the shake itself doesn't have magic powers. It's just a tool. Convenient, portable, and it'll meet your protein goals. So I don't really think you need a GLP-1 shake, but that's up to you. It is an option. I don't think you should have to pay anything extra for it. Vitamins and supplements. Necessary or just a good idea? If you've been scrolling through social media and browsing the health aisle, you've probably seen GLP-1 friendly vitamins and supplements. They promise all kinds of benefits, supporting nutrition absorption, enhancing digestion, balancing deficiencies caused by the GLP-1 medications. Sounds impressive, but here's the real deal. Most of us don't need them at all. First off, GLP-1 medications like Ozempic, Mugovi, Amgero, Zepbound, they don't automatically deplete your body of nutrients. These meds work by slowing down your digestion and help you feel fuller, longer, and curbing your appetite. While you can change how and what you eat, it doesn't mean that your body suddenly can't absorb any of the vitamins. That's nonsense. So, do you need them? I don't think so, that, but that's up to you. Let's take for example, if you're eating f fewer calories and not getting enough vitamins like B12, iron, and magnesium, but even then, it's suggested that you balance your meals, not take the supplements. And if you're going to take a supplement, plain one is fine. You don't have to pay anything extra for GLP-1. So, do you need them? Probably not. Should you take a regular vitamin? Probably. Here's what you should do. Talk to your doctor. I am not a doctor. I am not giving you medical advice. I'm just telling you as it is. If you're concerned about your nutrition levels, get a blood test. This will show if you're if anything like B12 or your iron or any of that needs to be addressed. Then focus on foods. Whole nutrient dense foods are your best option. Leafy greens, lean proteins, whole grains, healthy fats. Supplements are a backup, not a replacement. Be skeptical of claims made, especially online. Just because a vitamin bottle says that it's made for GLP-1 users doesn't mean it's better for you than a regular vitamin. Check the ingredients. You don't have to pay anything extra. Also, a little bit of fear-mongering is happening in these products. Some products claim that the GLP-1 Medications make it harder for your body to absorb nutrients. This is nonsense. It's misleading. Of course, there are exceptions if you're vegetarian or vegan, or if you have a medical condition like celiac disease. Then, like I said, consult your doctor. Now let's talk about cookbooks. Finally, they're popping up everywhere. You've probably seen them online. Bright new shiny covers cooking for GLP-1 users, meals made for weight loss journeys, promises of recipes designed specifically for these medications. Do you need one? Let's break that down. First of all, there's no special diet for GLP-1 medications. These foods don't require a specific recipe or particular foods that you eat, but they do help you feel full quicker because of the, they slow down your digestion. So you want to eat less. So the main thing to take from that is smaller portions, lean proteins, leafy vegetables, not necessarily anything new that these cookbooks you know, are giving you. They're, they're just 
rebranding the same old recipes and marketing them as GLP-1 friendly. Again, let's repeat, smaller portions, since the GLP-1 helps portion control, focus on meals, high protein, proteins keep you full and support muscle retention. Think chicken, fish, eggs, and tofu. Balanced meals. Pair your, your protein with nice, healthy vegetables, healthy fats, and a small amount of carbs. It's all about balance. Quick and simple recipes. Let's be honest, that's all you need. You don't need a special cookbook for them. But the good news is, if you buy one, you can still use the recipes, and hopefully it'll taste just as good. But you can just take a regular old cookbook that has some healthier recipes in it, just as fine, and you don't have to pay anything extra. Here's a tip. Instead of paying for a pricey cookbook, use the money to stock up on, stock your pantry on good ingredients. Treat yourself to a kitchen gadget. Make cooking easier. Get a nice blender, a nice air fryer. Make things a little bit healthier. Those investments are a lot better than the flashy cookbooks that are GLP-1 friendly. That's just my opinion. I have mine, you have yours, everybody has one. Chapter four, smoothies and snacks. Are these really GLP-1 approved? Let's talk about it. If there's one thing marketers love, it's convenience. Nothing screams convenience more than pre-made smoothies or snacks, especially when they're labeled GLP-1 friendly. From smoothie chains to snack company, everybody seems to be cashing in on this trend. They claim that their products are ideal for the GLP-1 user. Let's take Smoothie King, for example. They recently launched a GLP-1 support menu. These smoothies are advertised as high protein and fiber, which are both great for feeling full and staying satisfied. Small catch is, is they're very high in calories. Well, not very high. They're 300 to 400 calories, some even a little bit more. I don't know about you, but for me, for a smoothie, that's a lot of calories. For some people, eating smaller meals due to GLP-1 medi medications that might make you be a little bit more careful. A smoothie is not, not supposed to be a meal. It's really supposed to be a snack. I am guilty of using it as a meal though. That is usually what I have for breakfast. And same story with snacks. Protein bars, nuts, popcorn, they're now labeled GLP-1 friendly. The funny thing is, is they were around before the GLP-1 medications. So just a small amount of that to me is better than calling it a GLP-1 friendly product. That's just my opinion. You have your opinion, I have mine. So the big takeaway from this, it's pretty simple. Most of these GLP-1 friendly products, they're marketing tools. Companies know, know these medications are trending and they want to get in on it. But the truth is, the label doesn't make the product any more special or effective for your health. This doesn't mean the products are bad. A frozen meal might be right for you. It does have a lot of protein, good source of fiber, good price. Same with the protein shake. It's convenient, good source of nutrition. Doesn't necessarily have to be GLP-1 approved or GLP-1 friendly. That's just a label. Remember, this is your journey and your choice. Personally, I choose just regular. I'm not going to pay anything extra because it's got a label on it. If it's convenient for me at the time and I feel it's the best food for me, that's what I'm going to have. I don't know. You tell me what you think in the comments. Thank you and thank you for listening to me.